What's up, guys? We're back here in Blender, finally, after what, like two months? I don't know. Um, and I could give you a whole long reason for why I wasn't posting and all that stuff, blah, 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 school, blah, I don't care. Uh, basically, main point, I didn't want to. So, yeah, just being quite frank there, didn't feel like it. Okay. So, um, I've done a lot of animation tutorials in Blender, so I decided, hey, Blender has a game engine. Why don't I do a tutorial? on the game engine so yeah that's what this is um, okay so let's get right to the point um, first off and very important first step change blender render up here to blender game you'll see some of the properties change here and the most important thing that changes is the physics in render it's like this and in game it's like that and you want it like this cause this is all your game physics and stuff now what you want to do is select your default cube press G Z and one and press shift a mesh plane scale eight and um so we don't have to do this later just uh change our uh, go to the materials in the plane new uh change it to floor and change the color to green well this is optional you don't have to change it to green but i i like changing it to green because it gives it a grassy feel Okay, and turn the specular down and on this as well because I hate specular so much. Um, and now we're going to do the actual game physics. So what you want to do is right where it says default to the left of it, click this thing and press game logic. Yeah, logic in the game. And um, the very one of the most important changes that uh, this screen has is it has a logic editor and what this does is it edits logic <laughs> mind explosion but you didn't see that coming yeah so it ed edits logic and what that is is pretty much game properties um, so what you want to do is um, select the cube and uh, let me explain the sensors controllers and actuators real quick um, <clears throat> the sensors um, I think of it like an equation um, the sensors are the numbers and uh, and variables on the left side on the x and then the controllers are the signs um that's like the equal sign and the plus sign and all that stuff and um and this um is the output or the y and and it's the other side of the equation that is the result so um <clears throat> so we're going to I'm going to explain I'm maybe if um, I'm gonna explain what all of these are but pretty much these are what a sensor does is it senses when a property happens um, so like this is what we're going to do we're gonna select keyboard right next to keywords blank click it it'll say press a key and then press W so then right now you have the first part of your equation that you you're writing I suppose uh, so when you W the key when the keyboard key W is pressed then whatever it's attached to happens so we're going to add an and controller and um, if uh, you um, are familiar with computers or if you've uh, fiddled with redstone in Minecraft even you'll probably know what that these are except expression and Python um, these are gates I suppose you could say um, and or NAND nor XOR and XNOR and I'll explain what they do in further depth later um, now we're gonna add an actuator motion um, and we're gonna connect them by literally just clicking on one of the dots and connecting it to one of the other dots of on the, um, on another side a, a s sensor has to go to a controller controller has to go to an actuator so we just hook it all up and now we have our complete equation we have when the keyboard key W is pressed then it's and but there's um, I'll explain it more later but there's no other keyboard key or there's no other sensor uh, so it's just then so if keyboard key W is um, pressed then um, do motion zero everything so there's no motion but that's okay um, so what we want to do now is um, selecting the cube still uh, go to the physics panel um, physics type from static to dynamic 
Now this gives it, uh, I'll just show you what it does by um, bringing it up here. Now um, when you want to test, make sure you, you are in object mode and press P to play. And there you go, you have, that's what dynamic does. And what static does um, is nothing happens. Yeah, you can still move a static object with the keys, but it just doesn't have physics. So let's uh, control Z to undo all that. And now we are going to, you see um, when I add, change it to dynamic, it added some more object settings. But we, we don't want those object settings, we just want it to have dynamic properties. So um, now we're going to give it a forward movement because W is forward. So um, this is really confusing for me. Um, the all, all of the axes are mixed up in Blender. It's um, really confusing because for some reason when you press G, um, Y, Y is supposed to be up, but it goes this way, um, and Z is this way. I, I suppose it's because the grid, when you go into top view, it makes sense, but uh, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to me. It's in the These are all flipped and stuff. So... Anyway, um, what we want to do is in location, we're going to uh, change the, the Y, which is it's X, Y, Z, so you change the Y to point 0.1 by just clicking the arrow on the right side. So now when you press P and press W, boom, you go forward. You completed your, um, you completed your equation with all the variables put in. If keyboard key W is pressed, then... Uh, do motion uh, forward point one or y axis point one um, and that's your forward movement simple as that so now to minimize this you just click the arrow on the um, left of all of them and now let's do the next one add another keyboard uh, s and and actuator motion again and now it's the just opposite it's negative one this time so now you can move forward and backwards. And now, uh, last one. Uh, no, two more, actually. Uh, and let's add, just add them both right now. Uh, A, and scroll down, D. <coughs> so you got your basic WSAD keys. Now two more ands. And you, you, you use separate, diff uh, separate controllers for each function because... Um, it, and it's an AND, so if I were to put two here, then it would only move when I did W and S, and you don't want that, so you have, even though they're the, all the same exact controller, you want a different controller for each function. And two more motions. And connect them all, make sure they're all connected correctly. Um, and there, now put it back. And now this one, <coughs> we want it to rotate. And instead of just uh, move. So what we do is we do rot. Um, it was locked before, now it's rot. So it stands for location and rotation. And on the z-axis, uh, we bring it uh, to turn left. You uh, rotate it two degrees. And for some reason, it's flipped. So that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and now for this one, negative two degrees. And now you have your basic movement. And... <clears throat> this uh, cube is your player, and yeah, I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's so high tech. It's like crisis status up in here. Um, yeah, no, but it's functional, and that's what we want for beginning. So now that we have all of that, there's one more thing we want to do. We want to add a sensor, a keyboard, space, and sensor touch. And now, remember when we set a material for the floor? Uh, uh, change the material to floor. Boom. Simple as that. And now, here's where you actually get to see the and in play. <coughs> um, motion. Uh, connect it all up. And don't forget this one as well. So these are done. This is done. And now we want the force to be 100 and now it, it, if the keyboard um, key spacebar uh, is pressed and it's touching the floor it uh, uses a 
force on the z-axis of 100. And y you, I know what you're thinking, oh my gosh, 100 is so high. But it's really not because it's only touching the floor for like a um, microsecond or something like that. So it really doesn't jump as high as you, th you might think it would. So now when you press P, press spacebar, uh, no matter how many times you press it, you can only jump when you are on the plane. And if you have different terrain, you might want to just change it to if it's touching anything. Uh, but you would have to change it to if it's touching anything on the negative z axis um, because it, it it would just you would just be able to climb up walls and all that stuff. So yeah. So now you have your basic um, cube movement and all that good stuff. But there's one more thing we should do before we finish, and that's add camera following. So let's just scroll up here, add a sensor, uh, and make sure you select the camera, uh, add sensor always, and you can guess what that does, uh, and so if any time whatsoever, no matter what, um, then, so pretty much if the camera exists, which it always will, then do the camera actuator. And now we want, um, let's actually right click the cube, go to uh, object data, is that what this is called? Hold on. Uh, oh, it's just called object. And change cube to player. Oh, caps lock. Player. And now right click this again, and camera object, player. And it, it's just when you have a bunch of objects in here, it gets really confusing and just having a word that you know is the actual one you want it's always good so uh, let's actually change the dampening to 0 0.05 height 7 minimum 10 maximum 20 which will give it a nice smooth um, variable for how far and how close it can go so now go into camera view and press P and boom you're following your cube you can jump, and it always follows. You jump into the void, and it follows you. And you never stop. And I think eventually you'll de-render, maybe. Uh, maybe not. But anyway, that's pretty much all there is to making a simple game. Uh, I might do more parts to this uh, with more advanced stuff if you want me to. So thank you for watching. Um, and please like it if you liked it. And if you don't, I will steal your baby. Just kidding, because that would be kind of weird. I don't want your baby. And you probably don't have one. Yet. Yeah. Okay, I'm just doing random OCD stuff right now. And, okay, thank you for watching.